Welcome back to the show, everybody. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., Josh Darrow. It is Miami, Florida State Week. Hurricanes will be at Doak Campbell Stadium. Miami's won the last two times at Doak Campbell Stadium. Historically, Miami's played well at Doak Campbell. This year, Florida State is not playing so well at Doak. They're just two and four at home this year. What do we make of this Florida State team? I think that Norvell is getting the effort out of them but they're not getting all the results. Joe, they went out and made wholesale changes and went to the portal and tried to reinvent that defensive side of the football, and it's working. Uh, you're gonna see their number 11 is the Johnson guy who was, I believe, from Georgia. They brought him in. They've got a guy from Mississippi State. They brought in a Southeastern Conference infusion of talent, and it's paying off. Has it come together yet? No. They've had some issues at quarterback. They've gone back and forth between both of those guys. They've got the Milton kid from from uh, UCF who was had his name mentioned a couple times for the Heisman but this team is far better than last year's football team and you know we go back to how they played the season I go back to the beginning of the season or early in the season with how they played Notre Dame Notre Dame's done pretty good had a pretty good season they they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them almost had that and then of course they had the Jackson State deal which uh, took their season a little bit sideways but this is a very well coached football team and I expect it to be toe-to-toe -to -toe for 60 full minutes like everything has been the last five weeks. They also beat North Carolina this year, mm -hmm. so you know what they're, what, what they're capable of. I mean, the, the Johnson kid from, that they got in from Georgia is the real deal. And then Kier Thomas, who's from Miami, who came in from South Carolina, they, they got a bona fide you know, defensive line. Secondary probably needs a little bit of work. And I think the thing where Miami uh, has probably the advantages is offensively they've been all challenged this year, Florida mm -hmm. State. Their running game is led by their quarterback for the most part. But for them, throwing the ball down the field has been a bit of a struggle. So hopefully that will work in Miami's favor, or at least it gives them some clarity on where the matchups are when they take on this offense. Florida State uh, offense is 10th in the ACC in points, 28 points a game. They're 10th in the ACC. But what they do do well is run the football, 190 yards a game on the ground. Corbin has six touchdowns. He's very capable of breaking the big run. We expect Travis, the quarterback, to play and as Coach Diaz said earlier in his show, you gotta be able to surround this guy because he keeps plays alive. And certainly, I think against Carolina, he, he threw the ball 13 times against North Carolina. He was 11 for 13. He did the damage with his legs. He has two 100-yard games uh, running. The good news is, is it's very similar to what Miami faced last week against Georgia Tech. Sims is a quarterback who was a dual threat guy. Uh, matter of fact, he looked better when he was under pressure than when, yeah. he, than when he had time. And they had a pair of running backs that they had, one of them had a 70 plus yard run against Miami and they, got, they can do damage. At the end of the day, it's gonna be the turnover. Miami gives it away three times like they did against Georgia Tech it'll be hard to win the football game. And, and it's probably has never happened. It's probably never happened in that series that one team gives it away and they are the winner. So I think ball, ball protection is gonna be important as well. Yeah, I do like, I've seen, you know, we haven't gotten dialed in completely yet with Florida State, but just from watching them leading up to this, they have a, a, the stable of running backs is pretty good. Travis, Jordan Travis, the quarterback, I mean, he can, he's like a running back mm -hmm. playing quarterback and He's also prone to the turnover. He's thrown uh, 10 interceptions on the season. So, you know, that, that works in our favor. He's had, I looked it up today, he's had four, or they've had four games where they've thrown for less than 200 yards, which is unreal. So, you know the weakness, you know the strength. Manny, know, uh, Manny and his staff certainly knows that. So that's how I think Miami's defensive game plan will, will take shape. They uh, have 25 sacks on defense. You mentioned the kid Johnson. Uh, got off to a great start. The last couple of games, teams have seemed to be able to have been able to keep him out of the backfield. But nonetheless, 25 sacks. Kier Thomas has been a real powerful player. You got Brownlee, who's from down here in the secondary. Robinson playing well for them in the secondary. Uh, Akeem Dent is a high recruit in the secondary, so very athletic in the back end. Well, and then also what they've done is they've upgraded that defensive tackle spot. And for his for history of that game. Florida State, Miami used to battle who had the best defensive tackle. And I think that's gonna be the game within the game. How's Miami's defensive tackles gonna hold up versus Florida State's? And Florida State's got some big guys in there. I mean, they got a pair of 300 pounders and they move pretty well. But it's, that's every, every position group is, is accepting the challenge. You know, is Miami's O-line gonna be better or is Florida State's? And it just goes down. And that's the beauty of this rivalry. 100%, you know, they, their defense uh, was plagued by some, some things that we were used to hearing at the beginning of the season. Missed tackles, 
and giving up big plays. And they kind of rectified that a little bit, and then it kind of snuck up against NC State again and kind of bit them on the backside. So uh, they're a work in progress. But again, I think to Don's point with the, tur the turnovers on our end, right, because of um, their inability to really move the ball down the field in the throwing game, you don't want to gift, the word was gift, like on the sideline against Georgia Tech, don't want to gift them any points. And, and I think if you can manage the turnovers uh, or win that margin and go alongside with the running game, especially the way Miami's offense is playing, putting up points, that would work in our favor. Yeah, uh, Offense, uh, Miami, don't start a pep rally. Make sure they uh, give Tyler Van Dyke plenty of protection. Miami's pass offense is now number four in the ACC, moving right up the charts at 310 yards per game. We'll have the keys to the game and more as we continue on the show right after this. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. Recover your game. There are a lot of different drivers out there, and AutoNation is here for every one of them. The 10 and 2ers, the big fellas, nothing but the besters, even rock stars. But we do way more than sell new and pre-owned vehicles. We believe in something bigger, too. For every vehicle we sell or service, we donate to Drive Out Cancer. Over $28 million so far. What drives you, drives us. AutoNation.